Welcome! This will be part 2 of 4 to our intro to VBA series. Last time we went over why VBA is useful and some simple references and cell changes. This time we will work with variables. You will notice a list of variables on your left. This list specifically. This is a brief list of variables that should be enough in most cases, but there are many more that are not in scope. If you are looking for more information on them, you can find them pretty easily online. You will see that we have variable types for different types of numbers, strings, and different objects, including ranges and worksheets. Before we start, let's look at how you actually declare a variable. So it starts like this. dim int count as integer. <coughs> if we break the string into four of the individual text, we'll know exactly how to de declare a variable. First is dim, which is denoting that you want to declare a variable. Int count, which is the name of the variable. You should name it something that's related to what it's being used for. In this case, we're looking for an integer, and we're using it as a counter. And we're counting by whole numbers. As represents what type you will declare the variable as. An integer is the actual variable type. This relates to the types we have on the left. Before we run through some examples, there are going to be two useful functions you can use in VBA. They are as follows. The first one is going to be input box. So if we make int count just as a example equal to input box and whatever you put in the quote afterwards is how it's going to ask for your input. So this is what it says when it asks for an input. So if I play this, a box pops up and this this is what it says when it asks for an input is exactly what I put inside. And then you can enter any value in here. Uh, string, number, it doesn't matter. The second one is message box, which pops up a notification depending on it. Depend, and what it says depends on what you put inside it. So this is what it says when it pops up. So if I play this, you have a notification that pops up that just says exactly the same thing. Now using these two functions that we've added, we're going to make a simple addition calculator where you have to input one number and a second number. So we're going to declare three variables. In first, which integer first, dim int second, or second integer, and we're going to dim int answer, which is the first plus the second, also as an integer. Now what we're going to make int first equal to is exactly what we did before. It's going to be equivalent to an input box because we want to be able to input what we're adding. Input first number here. And then we're going to do the same thing with in second, input box, input second number here. And then int answer is equivalent to int first plus int second. And then we want a message box. And because we don't want to just say the number that pops up, where you want to have a whole coherent sentence, it's going to go with this. Or sorry, the answer is, and then remember how we can add strings together, and because we're doing a value and a string, int answer. And if we play this, something will pop up this input first number, let's try five, and then second number, let's try two, and then it pops up, the answer is seven. Now we could also do a similar thing <laughs> with strings. Let's create something that makes a email generator. So let's call this macro2. And we're going to denote string first name as into, uh, sorry, as string, dim string second or last as string, and dim email, string email as string. Now, like I said, String first is equivalent to input box. Please input first name. 
string second is input box, please input second name, and then string email is equal to string first and a period and string second and at xyz.com and then we want a message box your email is and string email so if we run this we'll have please input your first name my name is Winston my last name is Tran your email is winston.tran at xyz.com now notice if we go back to the first macro if we put in something like 2.4 and 5.3, our answer will still be 7. This is because we're using integer as a variable type and integer rounds. If we wanted a rounded number, we could simply go back to this variable list and we'll see that single has decimals. So we could change this to single, this to single, and this to single. And then if we run this, and we try 5.3 and 2.4, we'll get 7.7. .7. This is why variable types is going to be important. It actually changes the types of values you get in the future.